sponsored by Adventure Capitalist. Behold, the eternal glory of the Empire! Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at why Optimus did not revive Jetfire in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So without further ado, let's jump right in. As we remember during the final battle, Jetfire was mortally wounded in battle by Scorponok, with the attack barely missing Jetfire's spark. When Optimus Prime was revived by the Matrix of Leadership, he was very weak and wasn't in any shape to take on Megatron along with the Fallen. In addition to stopping their plan of blowing up the sun to create Energon, seeing that humanity was at stake, Jetfire, who felt that he never did something worth doing his entire Decepticon life, decided to make the ultimate sacrifice by offering his parts to Optimus Prime, saying that they would give him a power like you've never known. He told Optimus to fulfill his destiny before he ripped out his own spark, and his sacrifice would not be in vain, since soon after the two were combined, thanks to the help of Jolt and Ratchet, Optimus was able to destroy the Star Harvester, put Megatron out of commission, and kill the Fallen. When the battle was done, Optimus dislodged the bulk of Jetfire's parts onto the sand, concluding Jetfire's story in the Bayverse. But now, this bears the question. Why did Optimus not gather up Jetfire's parts and use the Matrix to revive him? Well, to answer that question, we first need to know what the Matrix is. The Matrix of Leadership in Bayverse continuity was created by the original Seven Primes. It was a legendary key required to operate Star Harvesters, machines that harvest Energon by destroying suns. The Matrix could only be properly utilized by one who shares the lineage of the Primes. The only reason why Sam Witwicky was able to use it despite not being a Prime was because after he was killed by Megatron, the six Primes appeared before him, praising his sacrificial acts to save Optimus. They pronounced him worthy of receiving the Matrix, revealing to him that the Matrix was not found, but instead earned. After instructing him on how to resurrect Optimus, the Primes revived Sam so he could fulfill his destiny of resurrecting the last Prime. The Matrix of Leadership would be used to revive again in Dark of the Moon, when it was used to resurrect the former Autobot leader Sentinel Prime, which circles back to our original question on why Optimus did not revive Jetfire. And the reason why he didn't was because it was physically impossible. You see, unlike the Allspark which can resurrect or fix a Transformer regardless if they have missing parts or not, the Matrix can't. It's confined to repowering or fixing a Transformer's spark. It's the great Matrix of Leadership. He holds the only thing in the universe that can repower a Transformer's spark. This can be proven since before Sentinel Prime was revived, he was low on Energon, forcing him to go into Stasis Lock, which is basically a coma for a Transformer. The Matrix was able to repower a spark by supplying it with the necessary Energon, which in turn resurrected him. When Optimus was revived, the Matrix was able to repair his spark, you may think that it was blown out by Megatron, but the Primes told Sam to merge the Matrix with Optimus's spark, implying that his spark wasn't fully destroyed. The Matrix just repaired it and supplied it with Energon. We know that the Matrix does not fix a Transformer's physical parts, since after Optimus was revived, his body was still the same, evident by his chest being all smashed up and his helmet being cracked. I will point out that Optimus is fully fixed during the combination scene, and that's merely a CGI error due to the battle damage CGI model being swapped for the jet power one, evident by the windows being fixed, the missing truck visor, and the part that was clearly removed for Jetfire's parts to go over. But as for why it was physically impossible, that's because Jetfire's body was literally taken apart and reassembled. When Jolt used his Electro Whips to link up Prime with Jetfire's remains, he generated an electromagnetic field that levitated and disassembled the parts, reassembling them into a jetpack and bonding them into Prime's body. Fun fact, Jetfire's entire head was used during this process, which leads me to believe that all the parts were used besides his spark. Now, during the final battle, many parts were either destroyed or misplaced. One of the afterburners that make up Jetfire's thigh was completely destroyed. And, and not to mention all the parts that were broken off by Scorponok, were blown up in the airstrike. 
And those parts were internal and external chess pieces which would be vital for Jetfire to survive in the long run. Even if the remaining parts were collected, Joel would not be able to reassemble Jetfire due to the missing parts. Even creating a smaller body for Jetfire would not work, due to the majority of his internal parts being destroyed by the airstrike. So with that said, it would be impossible for Prime to even use the Matrix to revive Jetfire, since with the limited resources they had in Egypt, a body for Jetfire couldn't be built. In theory, if they did take his spark back to Nest, a new body for him could have possibly been built. But it seems like every Transformer spark is unique to their own body, with each one being slightly different. So it's unknown if this would even be possible. On top of that all, Jetfire wanted to do something worth doing. That being his sacrifice for a greater cause, giving his life a purpose. And if he was revived, that sacrifice would be undermined. Hence why the Autobots likely laid him to rest in Egypt to honor the old Decepticon. Now before I go, a quick word from today's sponsor, Adventure Capitalist. Did you know that the game is still going strong after 6 years? That's almost unheard of for a mobile game. They're celebrating their 6 year anniversary with a celebration for everyone lasting 6 weeks. This celebration will include things such as a party hack giveaway and running back to back limited time events. Because you can't lose while playing the game, it's the perfect game to play while watching a bad sci-fi film or waiting for Rise of Unicron. It's the perfect game to have on your second screen while doing something else, rather than be on the toilet, waiting for a coffee, or hacking into a US satellite. Every time you put the game down, you can pick it back up and you will never lose. I started playing this game again when waiting for the Fall of Cybertron servers to come back online. A five-part series on YouTube about the creation of the game and how it came to be will soon be available, explaining how the studio behind Adventure Capitalist almost shut down, and then made the game that gathered them over 50 million players worldwide. You can check out the miniseries on the Adventure Capitalist YouTube channel or in-game when it releases. So with that said, go celebrate six years of capitalistic fun by downloading Adventure Capitalist today. And just like that, that was why Jetfire was not revived. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.